My dad went to Boys High School. Did he? Yeah. Oh. From Browns, what's happening? <laughs> Those words. <laughs> different. Oh, yeah. Sure was. The only one we don't have in there is a Tyson. <laughs> He's from France. I know that. That's why you yeah. caught my. Uh... Yeah. What? He's standing by. There's a bunch of other doctors up there too right now. It's a bunch. There's a bunch. Oh, okay. Well, you tell me when you're ready. He, they say they're still standing, signing in or something? Yeah. All right, so I'll wait a few minutes. Okay. Whenever you say, Michael, I'll wait a few minutes if you want. Mike says we're ready, so I guess we're ready. Turn off your cell phones, please. Hey, you. How you doing? Uh, I start by saying uh, it's a regretful day, very much so. It was January of 07 when I was excited about the naming of a new head coach of the Raiders, a young guy who I thought was dynamic. I thought could carry the flag, carry the torch of the Raiders because I wanted to get young. I wanted to get young people into the organization. Uh, and uh, we had our meeting here. I think it was in this room. And his family, I knew them. Uh, his family, uh, I knew him for about 30 years. His father uh, once applied for a job with us when we were in Los Angeles. That's Monty Kiffin. Uh, I knew uh, the father of uh, Lane's wife, and uh, we were excited, and I was excited. I knew it was a, a bold attempt, calculated, but I had always had a great success, or at least I thought I did, with young people. And even those that didn't stay with me long, I knew were qualified and quality and uh, sometimes things just don't work out. It was after a short period of time that I realized I didn't hire the person I thought I was hiring. And there are reasons which I could go into, but I thought what I would do is bring you up to the period of time right now When this morning I called Lane and told him that uh, he no longer is the head coach of the Oakland Raiders and uh, I'm dismissing him with cause and uh, that I just just couldn't go on much longer with the uh, what I would call propaganda, the lying that had been going on for weeks and months and a year and time and uh, he had a few questions he says does that mean I don't get paid I said that's what I'm saying to you I said I warned you and uh, I will go over with you people exactly how I warned him and uh, he asked me uh, is anyone else going to get fired or dismissed I said not at this particular time he wanted to know who the head coach would be and I wouldn't tell him because I hadn't finalized, this was about 9.30 in the morning, finalized with the gentleman that I was going to offer the opportunity to be head coach, and I wouldn't tell him who the head coach was going to be. No sooner that I got off the phone with him, within five minutes, Mortensen had the story exactly the way it went down, it could have been no one else other than John Herrera and Mike Taylor to have given that story to Mortensen. 
And Mortensen had a couple other things in the story that got me to the point where I am that I want to talk to you about. One of the things Mortensen had in the story is, however, a Raider source said that Davis privately sent the letter to Kiffin after the season's opening game loss to the Broncos, attempting to document that your coach approved the off-season acquisitions of naturally all those great players that we signed or we think have a chance to be great. A source close to Kiffin described the claim as fiction. Now this is the first time that they admit to you that there was a letter, communication, after the Denver game between the Raiders and Kiffin. For weeks, we've heard on television that there has been no commitment or no communication between Al Davis and Lane Kiffin except before the Denver game. Totally untrue. Totally untrue. After the Buffalo game, someone said, have you talked to Al Davis yet? He said, I have not talked to Al Davis personally. Went all over the country, but yet the night of the Buffalo game at the airport, he did talk to me. And we talked on several subjects, which I can tell you about if you're interested in. So I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to give you the letter that was given to Lane on the Friday before we went to Kansas City. It was after his false accusations on a Wednesday night about the defense belonging to Al Davis and Kiffin and attacking Rob Ryan publicly, which was unfair, unheard of in professional football that the head coach would attack one of his assistants. But I sent him a letter, I gave it to him actually, on the Friday before we went to Kansas City, and Federal expressed that letter to him. And I'd like to have John put up the first page of the letter. And if you'll bear with me, it's about three pages. Over the past months, you have made a number of public statements that were highly critical of and designed to embarrass and discredit the organization, its players and coaches. I left you alone during training camp, the implication when you were doing these things, in the hopes that would you cease your immature and destructive campaign. I wanted to make this work. I really did. I thought we had a chance. We had some great new young players. We do have some great new young players. We've added some veteran players. However, you continue to make public statements that are critical of the organizations, its players as a whole, as well as individual players. Such statements constitute conduct detrimental to the Raiders. And I still wish to stand silently by, no longer stand silently by, while you continue to hurt this organization. Further, your contract is quite clear that you work subject to the direction and supervision of the general partner and that the general partner has the exclusive right to do all things which is in the sole discretion or necessary to maintain and improve the club, the football organization, and our activities. Can you see the uh, letter up there? Is there? I realized when I hired you that you were young and inexperienced and that there would be a learning process for you. Your mistakes on player personnel and coaches were overlooked based on our patience with you. But I never dreamt that you would be untruthful in attempts and in statements in the press as well as so many other issues. Your actions are those of a coach looking to make excuses for not winning rather than a coach focused on winning. Let's go to the second page. For example, with the exception of Jabril Wilson, you were involved in recruiting all free agents and determining salaries for them, and you were explicit about your desire to sign Javon Walker and D'Angelo Hall, amongst others. All were a must to sign in your eyes. Hall, in particular, 
because he played for Greg Knapp in Atlanta, and Knapp gave him high grades. Don't run from that now. Coaches sometimes draft players. They make the pick, and they run from it. I, I believe that there are players. We live with them. They've got to play for us, and no matter what you think of Al, we've got to love them. That's, that's the way this world is. I realize that you did not want to draft Jamarcus Russell. He is a great player. Get over it and coach this team on the field. That is what you were hired to do. We can win with this team. Now, why did I say that? I said it because that was the battle at the draft. My first draft with him, about seven days before the draft, he came to me, and he didn't think we should draft Jamarcus. And I told him we were going to draft Jamarcus. He had other ideas. And... During the season, before, before this season, which I'll go into with you, he regard to your recent fabrications about the defense. During the final cuts, you made every cut on offense and every cut on defense except for Wakefield on defense and Wand on offense. Furthermore, during the game Monday night, Rob played your cover two defense and we got killed in approximately a 50-yard touchdown pass an approximately 70-yard uh, gain that led to a field goal. Now, he's never said to you people, or at least he does individually, that I wrote this letter to him and there's no way he could hide from it because he got it. You meet every week with the defensive coaches to go over both the game plan and, the general, uh, and to get a general feel for what will happen during the week in practice. You have the ability and authority to provide your input during those meetings and preparation of the game plan. I do not have meetings with Rob at all. You do. During the week, no one has ever told you what to do, either offense or defense. In addition, no one has ever told you during a game what to do on either offense or defense. And you still call every play. Now, in the past two years, he's called every play on offense. But this past week, he split it with another coach. And that's the reason maybe that the ball went up a little bit. But he has called. No one has bothered him. No one has interfered with him. He was hired to coach the team. During the week, I, okay, although you continue to use the media to express your dissatisfaction with others, no one has publicly pointed out to them that in four preseason games and one regular season game played this year, your offense has scored one first-half touchdown. That put tremendous pressure on the defense. Now, we played eight games. We've had two first-half touchdowns, one in the preseason, one in the regular season. It's, it's pretty tough for any football team and to continuously blame the defense you just can't get away with it. I know that you wanted to bring your father in to run the defense, and that Monty, that's Monty Kiffin, told me that he wanted to come here even though he is under contract to Tampa. I did not want to Tampa with another team. In any event, we had our attorneys call Bruce Allen and tell him that Monty Kiffin, because otherwise it's a tampering charge, talked to me, and all he talked to me about was Lane how to handle Lane and things like that. But what he really wanted to do was come here as a coach. Do, in any event, that was over seven months ago. Do not now run from the defense and your responsibilities. The letter constitutes notice that if you violate any term of your contract in any manner whatsoever, you will be terminated for cause. I trust that this will not occur. This was a warning to him that he's got to be a coach. He's got to take care of the players. He's got to do his job and stop complaining every day that he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. Now, admittedly, he didn't think we could win with this team. This was in 
February, January, February. He didn't think we could win with this team. As we started to sign the free agents, as we started to bring them in, and no matter what anyone says about the amount of money we spend, because you don't always win in a, in a negotiation with a player, you don't always win with a coach, the idea most of the time is to get the player, get the good players to try to win. He finally came to the point when he said, and he said it to some of you, that we look great on paper. Now we got to put the pieces together and make them work. And that's his job. But when we went to training camp, someone, somewhere, gave him the idea that he could get out of his job and still get paid. And that's what he was doing. He was every day harping, we don't do this, we don't do that, and attacking players publicly, agents calling me, what's going on? And one agent did call him and challenged him that this can't go on, what you're doing to my client. Just can't go on. We played the Buffalo game, and after the game, I uh, met him at the airport, and uh, I asked him some questions. Talked to him about it and didn't think anything of it until the next day when he met with you people and someone, one of you, I don't know who, maybe some of you asked him, have you talked to Al? He said, I've never talked to Al since before the Denver game. It's all documented. But he had talked to me that night in front of a strength coach, in front of one of our uh, publicists, and uh, in front of one of our coaches about the game. And at that time, I asked him a couple questions. I said to him, uh, tell me something. Where'd those two timeouts go? Where'd they go? And his answer was beyond, beyond the wall. And the only thing I say to you, when I say beyond the wall, that means beyond comprehension. I say to you, if we had... 20 seconds left on the clock and one time out. They had kicked the field goal to go ahead by two points. And they kicked off to us. And we threw a pass and got to about their 40-yard line after the run back of the kickoff. Now Janikowski's trying a what? A 57-yard field goal to win the game. Not trying a 75-yard field goal to what, I don't know. What I'm saying to you is that there was no rhyme or reason on the clock management there. I understand that. He's young, and the experience will come. I understand it. But see, he takes exception when you question him. I wanted to know why we went with five safeties in the game, three corners, and we got a corner hurt in the game, and we were in a little trouble. And he put down one of our players off the dressing roster because he was going to show me that he had some authority, and he really didn't have the authority to do it, and I challenged him. He said, well, I talked to the defensive coaches. A defensive coach was standing right there, and the defensive coach said, and we told you not to do it. We didn't want to do it. He put down C.J. Johnson who played in this game because we had some hurts. What I'm saying to you is it started to go where it was tough, tough to, to uh, believe anything that was being said. Then yesterday, I think it was yesterday, some one of you asked him, have you talked to Al? And all of a sudden he said, I'm not going to tell you if I talked to Al. After having denied talking to me, after having denied communication, I'm not going to tell you what goes on between Al and I. But in the past, ho, 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 he, he couldn't wait to talk about what goes on between Al and I. I reached a point where I felt the whole staff, we were fractionalized, that the best thing to do to get this thing back was to uh, make a change. It hurts because I picked the guy. I picked the wrong guy. And uh, 
uh, there's a lot more to this. A lot more to it. Uh, there's this business of me sending him a resignation letter. That is not the truth at all. I never sent him a resignation letter. What happened was, after the season, he told me he didn't want Rob Ryan. I said, we're going to keep him. You got 24 coaches. I think we got 24 coaches. Now, whether you want to believe it, I mean, you can question it. Maybe we got 22 and they say someone's not a real coach. You know, but it's almost unheard of. Uh, 24 coaches. I didn't want to coach or change the entire defensive staff and bring in his father. He said, well, I can't win with this guy. I can't win with this team. And we had had the problem with Jamarcus. Uh, and someday, uh, I don't think it's important now because I love the guy. Uh, he had Jamarcus all wrong. He had him all wrong in his thinking about him. And uh, Jamarcus has proved a lot of you wrong, a lot of people wrong. He was going to be the uh, overweight guy. He was going to be the uninterested guy. And he was never that way. He was always, uh, we had a player here who played in uh, uh, Alabama high school, the same high school as uh, Jamarcus, and was telling me about Jamarcus when Jamarcus was 12 years old. Uh, we had a player here who was a great player at uh, Tennessee when they won the national championship, T. Martin, a quarterback. And uh, he played at the same high school as Jamarcus. So I knew Jamarcus wasn't that kind of kid. But he said, we can't win. We got to get a rookie quarterback win. We can't win with this. And so I said to him, uh, what do you mean you can't win? And he said, well, we can't win. And I said, then do the honorable thing. If you don't think you can win, resign. If you don't think you can win, resign. I, I don't know what you're talking about. So he was after a job in college that he didn't get. And it's amazing how Bobby Padrino took the job. Uh, they had called me. He didn't realize they had called me. A friend of mine who's very big at the University of Arkansas called me and said, they're interested in Lane Kiffin. What do you think? I said, let him finish the season and do what you want, whatever he wants. Finish the season. They said, okay, we'll wait. However, Padrino had a chance to get the job, and that's why he really left Atlanta sooner than the season was over, because he wanted to beat Lane for the job. Lane was upset as hell about it and uh, went after some other job. And Lane said to me this, will you let me go and not ask for any penalties if I leave and go to a college job or go to another job? I said, Lane, if you say you're not going to get paid, if you're going to resign, I certainly will let you go right after the season. His attorney, Uberstein, and our attorney, Jeff Bieren, worked out the language, and it was about a quarter of a page. And all it says was, Lane Kiffin resigns his job as the Oakland Raiders, expecting no remuneration, or is it remuneration, and uh, the Raiders will take no action to stop him uh, from taking another job based on his contract. That was the story of what he called supposedly He's got Mortensen. Mortensen comes, you know, rolls. He's a professional. Uh, he lies. He's a professional liar. And uh, he got Mortensen to say that I sent him a letter, which I never did. And a lot of you carried the fact that I sent him a letter. So what I'm saying to you is that this is regretful, but I thought it was best for the Raiders. And I wanted to make it work because I want the Raiders to do great. Someone said to me the other day, a newspaper man, We'll, why don't you tell us your side of the story? Why don't you tell us what's happening? And I said to him, look, I don't want to win in the press. I want to win on the field. But I'm telling you because I had to regretfully let him go. And uh, it's based on cause. And it's not based on necessarily performance because I understand what we're doing, although, although I think we can do better. Uh, I, I assume there's a lot more. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, 
We signed uh, D'Angelo Hall, Jabril Wilson, Kaleem Edwards, Tommy Kelly, Javon Walker, Quaim Harris, Justin Fargus, Darren McFadden. They were the high-priced people this year. Not everyone has been a factor, but you got to stick with players. I remember last year, all during training camp, and it was tough on me because I didn't want to do it. We traded Randy Moss for a fourth-round draft choice. Randy Moss for a fourth-round draft choice. And uh, everyone here, the coaches look at the film. His foot was bothering him ever on the country that he uh, can't run anymore. Well, I had seen him. I go to practice. I had seen him run. They talk now, boy, we, if we had a playmaker. Well, all he caught was over 20 touchdowns last year if we had a playmaker. But those are the facts of life. Uh, we've had some great players come through here. In uh, 2003, 2004, uh, Rich Gannon went down with knee injuries. We let Kerry Collins go. He's driving uh, Tennessee pretty good right now. And uh, we'll get back. We'll be back. The Raiders will be back. That's, uh, I have unshakable confidence, the will to win. And I just know that the fire that burns brightest in this building is the will to win. And we will win. We will win. Uh, yeah. Questions and uh, please raise your hand, be acknowledged, and identify yourself also. David White Chronicle, who will be the next head coach, Mr. Davis? I uh, thought what we would do is uh, uh, go through the question and answer and take a little break, and uh, then we'll bring them down. Hey. You described problems you had with Lane at the end I of last. You, I beg your pardon. At oh. the at the end of last year, you said yes. there were some problems with Lane, and went on February, March. Why not fire him in the off season as as opposed to at this point of the year when it's going to kind of disrupt the season? Because I wanted to make it work. To be real honest, it's my you know my belief that it would work and it could work, and I wanted to make it work. Uh, maybe I didn't want to admit that. Uh, uh, that I'd made a mistake. And uh, to be quite frank with you, I'm firing him for cause now. I'm not firing him for anything else other than cause. Hi, uh, Phil Barber, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Hi. Um, your motto is just win, baby, one of your mottos. You're saying you're firing Lane more for cause than for on-field performance. Um, do you feel the team has improved under his watch? And do, doesn't that motto just win sort of imply that you will overlook personality traits and past history if it can produce a winning team on the field? I don't uh, really follow. I, I want to win, if that's what you're asking me. I don't know what you meant by the back part of the question, that I will follow personality traits. What, do you, what did you mean by that? Would you have won with Lane Kiffin? And if you think you might have, why would you fire him over personality conflict? Well, it's not a personality conflict. It's flat-out accusation lying, bringing disgrace to the organization. He took a young coach who had criticized him and suspended him, didn't tell me about it. I can then actually crazy like said, you better go to a doctor to get examined and uh, suspended him. He was the best worker he had. He told me that repeatedly. But the coach criticized him. But then two days later, he goes out and criticizes Rob Ryan publicly. No, I, I don't think uh, uh, necessarily I can. I didn't think I could lose necessarily with Lane, but I didn't think I can win anymore based on what he's done to the staff and what he's done to the defense and what he's done to some of the assistants. If I thought so, I probably would have stayed with it. But it had nothing to do with winning. It had to do with personality. It's the first time I've ever uh, let anyone go based on, based on what I call just, just a flat-out liar. I mean, let me ask you something. Did he tell you that for two weeks 
other than prior to the Denver game, he has not heard from me? He did. He did. Did he tell you after the Buffalo game he has never talked to me? Since before the Denver game. Since before the Denver game? That's true. It's a flat-out lie. We've talked several times, and we've talked, uh, uh, and the letters. I sent him another letter. If you want, I'll read the other letter to you, because I had to uh, caution him about lying to the press continuously. But you see, they know that I won't do much. I won't talk. I never once, when he would lie, raised my hand and said he's lying or something like that. They know I don't do it, so I let it go. And as I said, I thought he was young and immature and that someone would grab him by the throat and tell him he was doing the wrong thing. But his own father and Pete, they're the advisors, and uh, somewhere or other they got lost in this thing. Josh Shubow from Associated Press. Yes, sir. Um, you talked about how you pretty soon realized Lane wasn't the coach you thought you hired. At what point did you realize that? That, uh, well, his attitude toward, uh, to be real honest, toward people. When he took the job, if you remember his, uh, his uh, admonitions and statements were, we have great players. We have a great defensive coach in Rob Ryan. Uh, I'm excited. I looked at the defense. I'm excited about the offense. And I realized that uh, what they're more interested in was cleaning out the locker room, getting their guys in there, than, than winning. And, and I can only say to you, I have a different opinion on, on this thing. And... Uh, you can talk to anyone who's won a lot of games in life that the locker room is a great locker room when you're winning. And it's not a great locker room when you're losing. Sometimes you can hold it together when you're losing. But uh, I just didn't like his attitude toward people, toward coaches, toward everything. Nothing. If you look at the staff he hired, uh, he wanted to fire Everyone got rid of everyone. We had some players here who played eight and nine years that I asked them to be careful with. Just treat them, give them a chance. I can't let a guy go. I admit this. Uh, uh, take uh, Zach Crockett. Played here eight and nine years. Got touchdowns for us and all. And uh, I just can't let him go like, like they want to just close the door and get him out of here. I just don't operate that way. And I could never get him to feel toward X-Raiders the way I wanted him to feel toward X-Raiders, but I thought he would because when he came in for the job, oh, I know about the tradition, I know about the history, I know about this. Hell, uh, we, we, we have a publicist, uh, he didn't want him at practice. And uh, I said to him, why don't you want him at practice? Uh, we don't need him out at practice. All right, okay, so he's not at practice. Mr. Davis, Nancy Gay from the San Francisco Chronicle. Do you feel like you have enough of a case documented that if Kiffin and his representatives were to take this to Roger Goodell for a grievance that you would prevail? I wouldn't do it unless I was going to prevail, Nancy. Yeah. I didn't want to prevail. I didn't want to win. That's why I sent him the letter. I sent the letter, and it defined it the letter at the end of the letter. I don't know if it's up there. Just that coach the team that's what you were paid to do that's what you were hired to do coach the team and but any other accusations any other step out of line i'm going to fire you for cause and that's the only thing that i i thought i thought would uh get him but he still still kept on going why mortensen knew about the letter and none of you people knew about it and Mortensen just came with it today. It's because he gave it to him. He feels that's the way to go. That Mortensen broke the story that I had interviewing three guys. I wasn't interviewing three guys for the job. But Mortensen had the story last night. No sooner than the three guys left the office. One, two, three. It was running on the wires. Unless there's someone upstairs, our executive secretaries, I don't know.
<laughs> David White again. David White. This is four coaches you have fired since 2003. You said you made a mistake on this one. How much responsibility do you bear for these coaching hires and, and what's gone on here the last five losing seasons? I bear the responsibility. Yeah, it takes a toll on me. It sure does. Mr. Davis, uh, yeah. two years ago, Darren Horton with NFL Network. Okay. Two years ago, this team won two games. Last year, it won four games. Right now, one in three. You've been around this game a long time. Do you think this team is better than a one in three football team? Is this organization, should it be getting more wins based on the players you've brought in? Well, I don't want to get into that today, Darren. I'm not here to discuss the team. I'm here to discuss my letting Lane go and why, and uh, the reasons for it. No, I love this team. I think this team can win. I think this team can win. I mean, uh, I don't see, let me, let me just say, you know, I see every team in the league. I look at the tapes. I, I see one or two that may be a little bit above, above the rest, but uh, there's no one there's no one right. For example, Buffalo is 4-0, and uh, we can play with Buffalo. San Diego's 2-2. Two and two. We're getting closer. We can play with San Diego. Um, there's one or two that may be above, but other than that, uh, this league is starting to balance out, and we'll get there with this. If we keep him alive, he's good. This kid from LSU, he's a good player, and he's a good kid. And we're going to make them great. And uh, uh, we'll get there. McFadden's a hell of a player. And uh, we have some great players. We really do. Asamoah's a great player. And uh, we've gotten a little banged up and all, but we'll see. We'll see. It's not over yet. Mr. Davis, uh, Fred Inglis from Channel 2. Uh, you've given us a list of things that were building, uh, everything from dislike of drafting Jamarcus to causing maybe some fraction among the coaches in, in, in lies. What was the deal breaker? Which one was it that just broke the back here? I, I don't think there was any one thing. I think it was a, a cumulative thing. I think it, uh, the pattern just disturbed me. And, uh, uh, you know, I... I <laughs> The first question he asked me when I said you're going to be fired or you're being relieved for cause, are you going to pay me? First question. And there are a lot of people who believe that uh, in the organization that he wanted to be fired, but he wanted to be paid. Uh, Jerry McDonald with the Oakland Tribune. Are you concerned that you let the situation go on too far this season before you, while you were building a case before you took action, that the season might be damaged because of it? Yeah, but I thought, I thought, we, I thought we'd do a little better in the season. But, it, but uh, I think it's together. I think it's together. What I, but I mean, I, I don't want to get into uh, uh, a football tactics or strategy that's that's not why why I'm here I, I don't want to get into that I mean I, I could say for example three passes in the second half against Buffalo just beyond we're not we're not Woody Hayes uh, and if this kid is going to be what I think he is, we got to let him go. We we got to let him go. He 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 can play, and uh, but I don't want to get into tactics or strategy. I did mention one uh, on the field goal. In the uh, the time time management clock management, even in this game, 
we might have gotten 20 yards closer with a pass just before the 75-yard field goal with clock management. What? Uh, um, Mr. Davis, uh, Kevin Raddich, KGO Radio, up here. Um, where are you? Up here. Oh, boy. Okay. Do you believe that he was daring you to fire him? You said people in the organization believe that he wanted to be fired. Did you believe that he was daring you? That's a good question. I don't know what he was doing, but he, he got me to fire him. Kim Coyle, CBS. Um, the coach that's going to come in and take Lane Kiffin's place, is this interim coach or is this a long-term solution? In your Excuse mind? me, it's an interim coach. And he's not going to come in. He's here now. By that, I mean he's on the staff. And you, do you feel he's going to be here for a while? Is I haven't, I haven't, I haven't uh, made that decision uh, relative to uh, how long he'll be here. I... Uh, I want to give him an opportunity. He, he has a love of the Raiders. He always has had. He wanted to come here. That's another thing. You know, you hear about coaches. It'll be tough for him to get a coach because uh, coaches don't want to get in over here, and uh, it'll be tough to get a coach. And then the statement was made about uh, two weeks ago. I had to recruit all these coaches. A lot of them didn't want to come here. You know that. But go talk to them. Uh, and he even listed Rob Ryan as some coach who didn't want to come here. I mean, it got to the point where I, I think he forgets who he's talking about. But uh, you talk to Greg Knapp, who coached for us, who had been with me before. Uh, talk to uh, uh, Tom Cable. Talk to anyone. Uh, there are a lot of people who want to come here, and there are a lot of guys out there who are doing TV who uh, were on the phone this morning. Uh, just wondering what I'm going to do. And uh, they all have pretty good names, so we'll find out. Mr. Davis, Lawrence Scott with NBC. No, I want to go a little bit. Yeah. How much does it bother you personally that this much upheaval, the coaching position for the past several years, maybe tarnishing the image of a once proud franchise that's trying to. It bothers to me a great deal. Yeah, it bothers me because um, I like to think that uh, wherever you go in the world, you say silver and black, you say Raiders. And uh, we do have great fans, and uh, we've got a lot of things coming up, you know. And uh, we've got uh, three more years, eight, nine, ten, with the Players Association as a work stoppage possibly in 11. You've got to be prepared for that. Uh, we got stadium. There's a lot of things, and it bothers me. Yeah, I want I wanted to go in the right direction with youth, and see if we could build something that way. Cam, Cam Inman Barry in his group. Um, How's your mother? She's fine, thank you. Can you talk about how he uh, brought up the repeated coaching changes? How much of a detriment? I didn't bring that up. I said he did. Oh, okay. How much of a detriment do you believe that is to your guys' success every season? Not every season. Uh, well, obviously, uh, I don't think that a coach has to be more than four years because I think this thing is cycle, a cyclical cycle now. And uh, you got to remember, uh, one of the guys on TV the other day said, you know, um, the Raiders had been in the Super Bowl in 2002. Dallas hasn't been there since, I don't know when, 1995 or something. No one in the West has been there in about uh, 20 years. Kansas City, uh, Denver, about 10 years. And uh, uh, so we've been in 2000, 2001, and 2002. And we hit a thing that I admit that I didn't think we'd hit, that uh, I didn't think it possible that we'd, we'd hit these couple years. Uh, but uh, as I told you, we'll get it back, Cam. And uh, I do believe that uh, it's, uh, it's good to have one guy for four or five years. Yes? Uh, Phil Barber. Um, 
two questions if I could. The first, who shared the play calling with Lane last week? And the second, I believe you said uh, no other coaches dismissed. W what about Mark Jackson? Is he still with the organization? As far as I know, he is. Why, have you dismissed him? No. Uh, no, uh, uh, the one who shared the uh, play calling was uh, Greg Knapp. But other than that, in the past year and three games, uh, Lane has called uh, all the plays on offense. David White again. I know you, I understand you fired him for cause. If they win these last two games, they're three and one. Are we sitting here today? Yes, you would be. If the same if the same events took place, yeah, you'd be sitting here. Take a ten minute break. We'll bring down the head coach. Yeah. Hi, Cam. There were reasons. A cause means a, a grasp of a lot of reasons. And uh, but was it for, for the money? Or was it for the, for the lesson? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, guys, just give us a break. Please. What? Take a break here. What'd you say? The, the, the termination was it for because because it was. Uh, No, no, no. It, it's termination predicated on cause. It was not predicated on not winning or losing. It was predicated on cause. Insubordination, lack of loyalty, lack of this. Right. But it wasn't for money. It was for the lesson. Is that correct? What's the lesson? The lesson being that people cannot do this. Well, that's part of it. They can't take on the organization they're working for. They have in their contract that says they must uphold the virtue. What you call it? First of all, he doesn't deserve to be paid. He lied to. Oh, hi. Sorry about you. Thank you. Okay, how's Elizabeth? She's fine. She's working things. Oh, okay. and I'm picking up bits and pieces. It's a tough yeah, world. Here, here's the unemployment line. I stand behind her. <laughs> tough business these days. Look at that. I didn't say anything, but I, I assure you it, it wasn't that. I mean, you just can't have someone attacking your organization every week, every day, and uh, uh, getting away with it. And that's what cause means, that he didn't fulfill the terms of his contract. The contract doesn't say you have to win 10 games or 8 games or 6 games. It says you have to act in a manner consistent with the rate of tradition, the rate of history, the rate of loyalty. You have to be under the supervision of the general partner. You just can't do things on your own. Hi, Pete. 